You almost forgot the most important part, right? The bell. There we go. You almost always forget it. Um, so hi. I have no idea if anyone's even here right now. Um, but hello. I am on a long weekend. It's Friday. Hey, shy. Oh, sorry, Danger Noodle. I cannot. Rem I can never remember what I always choose to call you because your name is is so varied. But hello, Danger Noodle, and welcome. Um, I'm actually going to get right into it because this can take a little while to make. So, and also, please, if I don't pay attention to anything for a while, it's probably because I'm trying not to cut off any appendages. Um, but. Cannot forget the bucket, the most important part. We're actually gonna put the bucket in the sink because that is the easiest thing to do. You're lurking, <laughs> you're lurking in both streams. Well, yes, um, ooh, my hands already smell like oranges. Then you can tell me if the music is too loud, I will turn it down. I just wanted something that was a little bit interesting and a little bit, I don't know. Kind of a little bit retro um, with a bit of a flair to it. So, yeah. Um, oops, sorry. I need to move everything further forward so the camera can see it, don't I? There we go. Um, so, yeah. This is the only like bad orange of the bunch, but the juice in the lower part is pretty good, so that's all good. Um, but yeah, I'm actually making sangria today, and it's adapted from a recipe from America's Test Kitchen that um, I liberally wrote about. Okay, that's fine. Um, I want it to be audible, but not overwhelming, and I don't want to get struck for it, because some of the music, I'm sure it's all licensed. Um, but I adapted the recipe from America's Test Kitchen a while ago. Um, their recipe for sangria is really good. This is just a little bit better. Um, it adds some liqueur to it. It adds more liqueur than the usual calls for. It, um, it actually adds three different kinds of wine, which you don't need three different kinds of wine. Hey, Bill. Oh, I use your real name on the internet. If that's not okay, then tell me. Um, you're a juice and orange. Totally a juicing orange. Um, it um, it might be in the food porn Discord, but if you type exclamation point recipe, um, you'll get a link to it right now. So I actually have to be careful because I don't normally. Um... Oop. <laughs> um. Oh, exclamation point, recipe, uh, R-E-C-I-P-E. -E. Yeah, an extra E. Um, you never know with people's names, you know, if it's like, oh, I would rather you not, or whatever. Some people don't mind. I obviously don't mind, because um, I am too easily found on the internet everywhere. Ran out of cake, hello. I'm very pleased to have been your 69th follower. Very pleased. Words cannot say how pleased I was. Um, so essentially, we're juicing. Um, so I'm doing. I'm doing. I guess what's the harder, the more, the more effort part first is. Um, of all the citrus fruit, it's four. Um, four oranges juiced, and four oranges sliced, and. I don't, ha I mean, I, well, I have a KitchenAid mixer, but I don't have one of those attachments that does the zzz, which honestly, right now, I'm kind of kicking myself because I was in Target and I saw one and didn't get one, thinking, oh no, that's still too, it's too wasteful. That's, no one needs that. And right now I'm thinking, Brian, you're an idiot. Um... So I actually don't mind the pulp being there. It's just, um, it's just out of the, it's, it's easier to get the, um, all this is actually going right into the bucket that's in the sink next to me. It's just easier to juice when the pulp is not blocking up all the tubes. Uh, 
Um, but yes, if you were um, if you're lurking in Tanya's stream, uh, does rolling the orange work like rolling the limes to break up little juice capsules to make it easier for juicing? Yes, it does. Um, you can roll it. You can. I tend to not roll it because you know whatever. Um, you can roll it. You can also put it in the microwave for a moment. That loosens them up a little bit. Um, you can do this. It's actually if you if you have any like repetitive stress injuries and you need to do exercises, um, it's also good for that. But um, essentially, you you just choose the uglier oranges, aka the ones that won't look as nice when they're sliced up for juicing. Um, and I got a pack. I got like a three pound bag of oranges, and that was that had about eight oranges in it. Um, sometimes I'll have wait actually no yeah. Um, sometimes you'll have more than eight, but that's just easy to grab as opposed to having to count a bunch of oranges at the store. And I go for navel because they don't have any seeds. Um, and even if you don't want to juice oranges, don't bother. Just use equivalent, use a rough equivalent of orange juice. Um, there's no exact amount, but I'm sure if you went online, you could find a standardized, like, you know, roughly what is one orange of juice amount to and just use that much OJ there is no need to um, there's no need to make this any more complex than it needs to be um, because of all the cutting and the juicing um, I can't really say this is a low spoons recipe like um, if it's unlikely you're gonna have the energy for things you could space some of these things out over a few days for instance, you could slice up, you could slice up the citrus and um, put the slices in the freezer until you're ready to do everything else. Um, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously very ambitious in that I think I'll get this done in a short amount of time. So yeah, I'm basically just, oops, I have a hard time remembering where the camera is, and I am. Um, okay, my juicer's full, so I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in. This cutting board is about to get filthy today. There we go. So that was three oranges. We will juice one more. And then we'll clean up and get to slicing. I also have a grapefruit this time, which I don't normally do, but I figured, why the heck not? Um, I am adding a lot of sugar in, and I'm adding a lot of sugar with the liqueur, so a grapefruit might actually tame it down a little bit. Hey, Bron, welcome. Oh, I'm glad the CC is working. I um, I feel like it judges my diction, so, you know, there's that. Um, let's see, oh, whoops, my hand towel. Also something you always need in the kitchen because I am messy. No worries. Um, no worries. That's why I wanted to make sure that even though this is food and drink, I made sure that in the title and in my tweet about it, um, that it is, it is sangria. Um, this is potentially an alcoholic beverage. Uh, you can make this without alcohol. Um, and essentially that would just be grape juice or even better the sparkling grape juice that they that they sell in stores um, like take a sparkling grape juice and a sparkling apple juice mix those together with OJ and um, other fruits if you don't want to use liquor I would say just get the other fruits that you like like peaches and pears and um, smush them up and strain them out and when you get that strained um, juice that would be a way to add it to everything and essentially make this a nice sparkling drink that is non-alcoholic. You just have to do a lot more natural. Um, sangria can include blood oranges, but the store did not have any blood oranges, so it will not include blood oranges today. And I can also tell you the danger of not being careful when you're um, cutting and, um, using, and using citrus is that if you have any tiny scratches or any tiny cuts on your hands like I do on my right hand right now and I don't know where it came from it's gonna hurt when you start juicing and cutting citrus fruit um, just like it hurts right now 
it hurts a little yeah so i don't know what i did to my pinky but i must have scratched scrapped it scratched it or scraped it um because i'm getting a little bit of a tingle from the uh from the uh, orange juice so that's fun all right so again i i know it's like over here off stream <laughs> you're still alive <laughs> Um, so, um, it's, again, my, uh, the bucket that's holding all this is actually going to be in the sink. So it's actually just over here. Um, because my kitchen's not huge. That's why. So that's the juicing. So that's pretty, that's pretty easily done. And again, all I do is get messy. So I don't know why I keep putting my towel away. Um, and for anyone, um, I may mention the Photoshop tank top. This is the Photoshop tank top. The reason for that is it was a while ago, um, that we had a really rare warm day in like winter between winter and spring in DC. So I was out on my patio reading a book, having a cocktail in my tank top and shorts, and I sent it to friends. And they, 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 because of the color contrast, um, oh no, okay, yeah, only partners for co-stream because of the bit rate, at least that's what they say. Um, because of the color contrast of the tank top and me, um, someone wondered if it had been digitally put on. So this is the Photoshop tank top. I do have another tank top that is bright green, which I guess would also count as a green screen tank top. Um, but I only wear that like playing Overwatch or something silly, so you just have a headless, not a headless, a nothing but a head me. So instead of being headless, I'm all head. All right, so we really don't need to roll these, although um, some people slice them up in quarters. I tend to slice these up as in not super thin, but thin, because I want more of it touching the stuff. So if I fail to pay attention to the stream for a little while, it's because I am slicing. So, and I'm not that worried about seeds, though if you see any like major seeds that might make somebody gag, you can obviously take them out if you want. Um, it's very difficult to do like proper knife skills with a lemon when I, I actually let me, I'll do the next one in a proper knife skill way. Um, but essentially, I like to cut them and then just cut them in half and drop them in the bucket. And try not to spill juice on yourself. Uh, you're patiently waiting for squads to get to affiliates. I'm, I am too because uh, there are so many games I think that would be fun to stream. So this is how they suggest you do, um, if you're going to do something round, you actually cut off. Um, like you cut off the edge first so that it is on the board. It doesn't move So it's got a flat edge and I'll be honest. This is fine. Although I'm gonna actually Oops, it's over here. Isn't it? Squirt it in um, And to be honest since I'm streaming this I should probably be doing that so I have a less chance of cutting anything including myself so I just take off the very end because that is all skin. Um, if you want to zest, if you want to zest um, your your lemons and oranges and limes and whatever for this, that's fine. But what I tend to do is after it's after the sangria has sat for about you know between two to eight hours, I actually take the fruit out because the longer the skins stay in, they kind of make it a little bit more bitter and it's not as um, tasty when it's bitter so um, you don't want to leave them in there but I actually just love having like the bucket over there because I'm like toss toss in the bin junk it and honestly it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be precise 
Um, sometimes if you're making this, because you are using red wine, when you are done with all this, all this fruit is gonna be that nice purpley color. So if you're trying to serve it as a cocktail, you might wanna get an extra lemon and lime to save afterwards and slice that into nice garnishes because all this fruit's gonna be like purple. Hey, Calisandra, we are not gonna be cutting off fingers today. No, thank you. Your concern for my fingers is appreciated. So again, cutting off to give our lemon a stable base, much more stable than Brexit. Oh, I said it. And like I said, you can make these as thin or as thick as you like. Um, the point is you're going to want to stir them around with the, in, with the juices in the wine. So, and any little end piece, I just squeeze in. I don't put the whole end piece in there. Let's see here. Can I cut this whole pile? I can because yay. And what? Done. All right. This is actually going faster than I thought. Trom, hello. Um, am I able to do multi-twitch with this setup or is it too much of a hassle? Well, um, I cannot. Right now, um, there are, yes, like there are websites that let you do multi-twitch. So you put like my handle and Tanya's handle into that website and I'll let you watch our stream side by side. Um, yes, you certainly can make a comment. Um, or a trauma. Wait, if it's a trauma, is it a pun? <laughs> or is it bad? Is it good? Is it bad? The chat is in that room over there. That's why I keep looking over there. Oh, well, the captions can be moved. Um, so the caption, the caption error that I'm using, um, should have a, um, a settings wheel and you can move it around. You can make it square. You can make it, um, oh, okay. First off, Tanya has made a, um, multi-stream setup, so feel free. Um, but you can also turn the captions square. You can move them around the screen. You can turn them off. You can shrink the font size, make it bigger, smaller. Hopefully that helps. Yay! <laughs> um, it is my favorite because when people are playing Bioware games, you know, the streamer is in the lower corner. And, oops, the lower corner over here. And then the Bioware option wheel is like right in the middle. So the captions were covering it. So I just move the captions up just high enough. So they sit on top of the dialogue options and it's fantastic. That is not enough lemon cut off. There we go. So sometimes I like you slice it and the and the lemon will stick to the knife until you move the next slice. I kind of like to shake it off. That last piece is always hard to get. All right, squeeze that in there. Yeah, this is actually, I realize this is um, probably not gonna be as long as the cookies stream um, because it comes together fairly quickly, although I haven't cut the oranges yet, so I should probably not count my chickens. Um, I found that it is pretty accurate. Um, however, it is, is only as good as the captioning engine. Um, if I'm missing something important that somebody asked me, please remind me because I am half paying attention to chat. Um, but I find the web caption engine that they use to be fairly accurate. Um, it doesn't know a lot of words. For instance, like it, like um, Furwick is, first off, Furwick is playing Mass Effect Andromeda. So he is saying the names of the alien species and it doesn't know what they are. So things like that. Um, oh yeah, the multi-twitch probably doesn't have the same plugin as, um, so, 
I guess you just have to kind of decide if it's easier to keep me in captions and Tanya over there because she's talking about D&D Live, which is kind of awesome. Um, okay, I think I'm going to save the grapefruit for last because that's a big one. Um, I will say the one thing I did not show is I washed all of these beforehand. Um, you don't for most things you don't really have to but because I'm putting the peel in along with the fruit um, I wanted to wash them so let us do that one more time let us take a little bit of a chunk of that orange off nice stable surface squeeze what's left throw that away if you compost I guess you could compost the oranges but I don't do that because I really don't have room in my kitchen or apartment to compost. This one actually might cut into quarters. Well, we'll see. No, halves look pretty good. Yeah, halves are okay. Then this we'll probably chop up. Actually, no, we won't. We won't. We'll just squeeze this bit into what's left. Just get extra juice. Yes! Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Hello, boss. Welcome. For anyone who has a long weekend, congrats. If you don't have a long weekend, happy Friday anyway. If Friday is not your weekend, Friday is perhaps when you start work, then you have my condolences and I hope that your weekend goes well. Rather, I hope your not weekend weekend goes well. I don't know how many other bases I can cover there, so if I missed you, I'm sorry. I've never been a very good knife person, so I cannot do like straight cuts. I can't do symmetrical cuts. I mean, it's no surprise. I can't do anything straight. <clears throat> but I always end up curving, like curling into a thing. So like I try and slice a loaf of bread I baked and um, I end up like the last piece always looks like some horrible nightmare of a curve that goes all inward. There we go. Oh, wait, we'll do this, the, this, the, the fancy fanning of the slices to get that, you know. There's your glamour shot. There's your fanning of your slices. Then you stack them all up like a deck of cards and cut them in half, just like you do a deck of cards with a knife or something. Um... I <laughs> cut them in half like credit cards and then stick them in the freezer like you're a woman in a shopaholic movie because of course all you all the women they do all the shopping I'm like that confessions of a shopaholic they should have cast a gay man in that instead I mean I know technically it was like autobiographical ish but still So yeah, if you want to, if you want it to stay up for a little bit, then you kind of put it, pull it back with your finger after you've made that slice. Now it's like super fancy. But sadly, because they're oranges and lemons, you can't do that like super special chef knife trick that they just like cha 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 cha. Like nah, I am not chopping citrus fruit with a cleaver. Um, I am not a shopaholic now. But I definitely used to be a shopaholic. Um, even now, I do resort to retail therapy a little bit. Um, but I used to be much, much worse about my money and my responsibility with money. 
Um, but I was never at the I'm going to put my credit card in the freezer stage because that just that, that's silly. I would just cut it up and throw it away. Putting it in the freezer means I still have access to it. I am dripping orange juice all over the kitchen. I am also, um, because I am chopping things, I am wearing shoes. Um, admittedly, for your feet, especially if you, as you get a little older, I mean, I'm in my mid-40s, so, but you should wear shoes around the house if at all possible because it's good for your feet. But, oh, chop, chopaholic. Well done, well done. Well done. I don't really have anything other than... Oops, nope. Ta-da! Well done. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, let's see, I feel like I missed a few things. Um, yes, it is nice to have the days off if you have them. Um, a chopaholic. So, real sangria. Um, oh, let me hold on a moment. Um, exclamation point. If you are curious, um, if you're curious about the recipe, that's a post to my blog. That's a link to my blog post about it. Um, oh, to get back to what I was saying about like minor safety point is that yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing shoes because I'm using a very sharp knife, and should anything slip and fall towards your feet, you don't want to be barefoot when you are holding a really sharp knife, even if you're just at home by yourself. People make fun of Crocs, but if you're any 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 profession where you're standing up a lot or walking around a lot, they're great. They're also great in a kitchen environment because of that thick rubber. I'm a little proud of myself. I almost never do that side cut. I almost never do it. We all appreciate a little thick rubber. That was a lot. That, okay, see, this is like, you can tell the ring on this one is actually quite thick. So that's another reason why after about eight hours, I removed the fruit from the sangria because some of them have this really thick ring and all of that is just gonna taste bitter the longer it stays in the sangria. Um, so it's really good to impart as much flavor surface area as you can during the initial mix. But after that, you're gonna wanna remove the fruit and um, you can take the peel off and like freeze the, freeze the, the pulp or put it into ice cubes or put it back into the sangria. But you're just gonna wanna peel it because the pith is gonna make the whole mix uh, bitter. And you really don't want that. And I want to keep my fingers, so I'm going to pay attention to this for a moment. If there are any chefs watching right now who have anxiety, um, don't worry. But I certainly understand why you might. Um, Yes, lots of pith. Uh, for pomelos, which are mostly pith, you can candy it. Oh, I've not done candied fruit. Ooh. You had a childhood friend who loved the rind. Yeah. Um, Felis says, I'm being rated by voice chat? So you're saying that having too much peel would be an unintended pithfall. Bravo. 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 Bravex. Gender non-conform all the words, people. Gender non-conform them all. Okay. There's another reason I love this cutting board is that it has that little ring around the edge. So I can just easily pour all the leavings back in. Ah. 
we're almost done with the cutting board part of, the, of this because yeah it's getting all like juicy and wet this is sangria stream yes it is um by that i mean a stream where i make sangria not a machine that you get refills and it pumps out sangria although that would be awesome like you know siri remind me to patent a sangria stream maker Okay, I've never really done a grapefruit, so I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to cheat and uh, cut it in half first. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty and pink. Look at that. Love it! Um, yes, it is a Photoshop shirt. Oh, what? Aww. Thank you. Wait, what? Wait, what? What is happening you're, you're, that's so nice thank you thank you so much too kind too too kind um but yes this is the photoshop tank top i i mean you can actually i can see that it's a little the contrast even now doesn't quite look real like the shirt is actually here it's not real but it, yeah like it's on me but yeah um okay so um, these have a lot of pith too, so I'm just gonna cut this. I'm just gonna cut this downward in half and pop it in. Um, I've never ever used grapefruit in my sangria before, but what? <laughs> Thank you so much for the resub. Um, I don't actually have the confetti in this in this scene, which I will have to fix. And I thought about other ways to make these slices, um, like you know, using a mandolin vegetable cutter peeler. Sorry, ve vegetable cutter. But I feel like these are too thick even for that. As a matter of fact, these are so thick, I'm going to cut them in quarters, which I almost never do. But this is my thick grapefruit. So thick. Oh, that is just. Oh, wow. That, that was a rolling eye. That was really yummy. Hey, Shamar. This is just the stream now. It's just me eating citrus fruit. No, that goes in the sangria. That's for other people, not just for me. That is really good, though. Ah. Um, so like the baking stream, if anybody has anything they would like to bring up in chat that is food related, um, since today we're doing sangria, if you have questions about booze, um, I will, you know, say not every, you know, like it, I was a little hesitant to even do this because sangria is an alcoholic drink and you know, first off, many people do not have the best relationship with alcohol or they have taken steps to um, to help fix their relationship with alcohol. So I'm a little concerned about doing it on Twitch, but this is a very simple, it's a very simple thing. Um, but if you have questions about food and whatnot, um, then by all means, please feel free to throw them in the chat and I will do my best to see them as they scroll by. Um, my favorite non-alcoholic cocktail. Interesting. Um, I actually really do like mocktails. I think that they are a really, like there's an art to them. Um, oh, I will get to the wine in just a moment. Yes. 
Um, I think they're really good art. I tend to like ones that are based on um, really freshly squeezed, a good combination of freshly squeezed fruit juices. So um, I almost like like an overly um, an overly sweet one, like a guava, um, that is then tied with a. Whoa! That's a raid, y'all. That's a raid. Um, wow. Um, um, I, uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> welcome. Um, welcome on in from Cypher's channel. Ooh. Uh, I am making sangria, um, as I'm sure is a terrible shock because I mentioned that I was going to do it over there and she's been lurking over here. But welcome, welcome raiders. Um, my name is Brian. I am urban bohemian everywhere on the internet. I am a queer variety streamer on Twitch. I am obviously a variety streamer because today we're making sangria. Um, let's see here. All right, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna swap this out. don't make sangria on every stream. I wish I could, but this one, that's a lot. So we have all, okay, don't throw it at myself. Um, oh, wait, what just happened? I heard the noise. Oh, follows. Okay. Goodness. I forgot what my own noises are. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, to loop it back around to um, non-alcoholic drinks, I think I'd like anything that is a that is a very fresh squeezed fruit base. Um, melon, like putting in melon as a drink, like it, like crushing cantaloupe or watermelon um, or honeydew and making anything out of that is nice. Um, so, oh, hold on, the chat is moving really fast. So, um, I am going to do my best to keep up. And I'm actually going to put my bucket on top of my towel so it doesn't slide around a lot. Um, Lady Kadashing, thank you for the follow. Um, so yeah, a fruit syrup as a base for non-alcoholics um, would work. I also say if you want to do the same thing, and this has essentially been the juice of four oranges, four oranges sliced, four lemons sliced, and one grapefruit sliced, um, and you can add that to um, the sparkling, like the sparkling non-alcoholic grape juice, or if you don't want sparkling, regular, um, regular like fresh grape juice, a fresh fruit juice, a pomegranate juice, anything. Um, and essentially just let the two sit for a while and let those flavors blend and you have a non-alcoholic sangria. And if you're making it to take to a party, then that's good because then all someone has to do is if they don't want non-alcoholic, like after it's served, they can add a shot of whatever their spirit they like to it. So there's that. Um, oh, that's okay, Aegis. Aegis, Aegis. I never remember how I want to say that name. Um, have a fun lunch, uh, Sirius, and say hi to the chickens for me. Um, what's next? What's next is I forgot how much sugar goes in here because sugar does actually go in here. Um, so I am a dunce. I'm gonna have to like use my own tag, go to my own website, and get my own recipe live on the internet. Um, oh right, three quarters of a cup. Um, uh, you can actually, this recipe can be divided in thir into three parts. The original America's Test Kitchen recipe is actually for one bottle of wine. And what I did was I just I just multiplied that by three bottles of wine because this is enough effort that if I want to take this bucket to a party, it'd be so much easier to do that. So, um, oh, there is a cool down on the recipe. Um, just, a, just a small cool down though. So I need three quarters of a cup of sugar that goes in here. Um, and again, the sugar is not to make it super sweet, but it is to mellow out the wine um, because I'm using fresh wine I'm not using wine that's had time to sit out so 
So if you were making this for like one bottle, you would be one quarter, just one quarter cup of sugar, like, you know, less oranges, less lemons, less things. I also like putting sugar directly on top of the fruit because it kind of gets all macerated, mass maceration y, mass emacerated. I don't know. I just think it's pretty because you got like now you have all the fruit and you want to kind of like let that all tumble around. It's like it's candied, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I need a spoon. Found a spoon. Um, so, yeah, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually cut the fruit first, then put the sugar on, and then add the juice after it's had time to sit. But it's all going to sit together, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but sangria is totally something that you can make in a non alcoholic version. Um, there is there's really no requirement that it needs to be boozy. I'm gonna try and move this into the uh, into the range of the camera. Um, so for wines, because sangria is something that sort of like is a leftover -y kind of wine thing, I use three different kinds of wine. Um, and more importantly, three different kinds of cheap wine. Neon Saline, thank you so much for the follow. I forgot my wine opener. Um, so I tend to use um, brain, work, I forgot words. I forgot words. Also, Alexa, turn it down. Um, I use three different kinds, but they're cheap. Um, so this particular one that I got today is Yellowtail. Um, and it is like between, depending on when you get it on sale, it can be between five to seven dollars a bottle. Um, the point of this is that sangria is really something that you make with the wine that you had left over. To which I'm like, um, leftover wine, what is that? But it's what you make with the wine you had left over, and you got some fruit lying around, and you just kind of throw it together. Um, and then you use whatever else you want to to kind of like add sweetness. That can be ginger ale, it can be booze, it can be brandy, it can be vodka, it can be liquor, whatever you like. And um, that's it. So I do not splurge on the wine for sangria, obviously. I'm adding sugar and fruit to it, so it's not the kind of thing that you spend a lot of money on. Or, nor should you. Gemini, hey! You got dragged along with the raid! Um, and depending, I know in the US, if you go and buy like six bottles of wine at one time, you get a discount, like 10% off all six. So, I'm not saying go buy six bottles of wine, but if you had to. Um, what white wine would I suggest? I would probably go with um, Pinot. I don't know. I'd probably mix um, a Pinot Grigio and a Sauvignon and perhaps a Pinot Gris. Um, because with the white wine sangria, you actually want that, you want a little bit of that tartness to come through. You want the lemony notes, you want the citrusy, you want that apple. I'm about to knock my wine over, so sorry. I got into my, I got into my like food talking now. Um, so you want those notes in that. So I would try that. Um, also, you can just use three bottles of the same wine. I tend to use a blend because I feel I feel like there's a difference in the flavors, but it's probably not. Um, but any one wine you suggest, just triple it. So I'd probably go with like a Pinot Grigio because it's not too sweet. Um, so that is all sitting there simmering away. I say simmering. It's not really on the heat. Oh, no worries. Uh, to back it up, I am making... Hold on. Oh, wow, Felis, thank you so much. Um, I am making uh, my my take on the America te America's Test Kitchen Sangria recipe. It uses um, three bottles of red wine, 
uh, oranges, lemons, grapefruit, and some different liquor or liqueurs, depending on what you have around. Um, so that's what I'm making, a red wine sangria with a bunch of fruit. Uh, let's see, is that, in the, is that in the shot? It's in the shot. So here's the fun part. That's some great ASMR sound effects, I'm sure. It's very, very dignified. And then the bottles get recycled. But right now they get resynced because I haven't set up my recycling for today yet. Um, I mean, I could do an entire stream where I fill a bottle full of water and just slowly empty it out into other water. Um, I don't really, I don't think I have the proper setup for an ASMR stream because I know that it helps to have like a binaural microphone and things like that. Um, an Ipanema, please share. What is an Ipanema? So we're pretty much done at this point. There is not a lot that you can do. Um, the one thing that they do make sure to add, to, to have you add, is um, triple sec. And hold on a moment, let me just double check again to see how much it goes in here. Um, I do have to taste test it, but I'm not done yet. There's more to come. And then I will put it in my mouth. So they always ask for about an ounce to three ounces of triple sec. Um, and I modified that to, um, I modified that to change it to triple sec, peach snops, pear, um, elderflower, strawberry, whatever. Um, so I actually have a trusting, trusty, trusty measuring cup over here. And um, I'm gonna make this a little bit extra, a little extra punch. So, oh, wait, what did I miss? I missed something delicious, something delicious. Oh, oh yes, that, that actually drink does sound really nice. Um, Will it be sweet or tangy when it's in my mouth? Well, I guess it depends on whether this sangria ate pineapple in the past days or had asparagus. So I'm using my, my trusty kitchen scale. Um, because, oops, it helps if the kitchen scale is steady. Um, because even when you make cocktails, um, it's one thing to measure using using the jiggers, using the, the, the spoons and all that. Um, but to be really super precise, you use a scale. So I'm going to add a half a cup of triple sec. It's just your standard triple sec. See, I, I need to be a proper cooking show. So I have like somebody make up fake labels to put on my things so nobody gets like a sponsorship. Is why I'm not repping any particular I'm not repping up any particular brand of anything right now Steven welcome good evening I hope you had a lovely walk um, I am also I actually added um, this is elder this is like a knockoff brand of st. Germain's so it's um it's essentially elderflower liqueur and I add I'm going to get how much to get Aegis labels on everything. You're growing your brand. 
Well, if you want to coordinate a deal before I stream, I can send you the requirements of the things I'm making and you can send me stickers. Um, I think for this though, I'm only going to do two ounces because it is a bit powerful and a lot of flavors will take over everything. Like you'll know that there's a bunch of other stuff in there, but all you'll be able to taste is elderflower liqueur. Oh, you're currently on it. So you're typing. See, that is, that gives me like encouragement because I also need to get out and exercise. And I also watch streams when I'm on the trail. Like I will, I will listen to streams when I'm on the trail and then I'll say something, but yeah. Um, this is a uh, Bosford Rosé. It is, oops, hold on. There it is. It's a straw, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a strawberry um, liqueur using gin. So um, I just thought the strawberries would be a nice touch. Yeah. So, but again, for that, we're only gonna go with a little bit. I know you can't see how much I'm adding, um, but I will say for the triple sec, I added a half a cup. And for the elderflower liqueur and the strawberry liqueur, I'm adding a quarter cup. And uh, there we are. It's all just going in. No ceremony, just straight on in there. Um, and I will say also add peach snops. However, when I went to the store, I could not find peach schnapps. I couldn't find peach liqueur. I could find a lot of different things with, with peach in them. So there was like a peach brandy. There was a peach tea vodka. Um, all kinds of peach-ish things. Um, but what I went with is um, a medium. I call it a mid-level because it kind of is. Um, a mid-level vodka. Um, also, the label is really adorable. It's uh, Svetka, it's cheap. They do a lot of seasonal flavors. I was gonna say colors, but color also. But they do a lot of seasonal flavors and they're usually pretty inexpensive if you can find them in the smallish bottle. So I'm gonna add, hold on a minute. Okay, that is really peachy. So I'm gonna add, I think I'll add a half a cup of that. Um, so this essentially is now pretty boozy, but not super boozy. You know, I mean, the wine already made it boozy, but liquor can sometimes put it over the top, spirits and all. I honestly just did that because I wanted to see how, how sweet and peach it was, because that's the other thing about um, flavored and seasonal spirits is sometimes they weigh, they put the sugar, they put, hmm, they use sugar to try and overcompensate for the fact that their flavor isn't quite there. So what you end up getting is you end up getting a really sweet drink that tastes faintly of something. So it's like La Croix sparkling water, but for vodka. Like the, my favorite joke about La Croix sparkling water is it's like, it's like you're drinking sparkling water and then somebody in another room yells out the name of a fruit. Um, so yeah, um, once again, the, the, there's exclamation point recipe for the recipe. I'm going to repost the recipe to my discord and, um, because they have food channels in theirs or drink channels, um, I did not get limes. Sometimes limes are almost a little too much for me, um, in terms of what they add, um, but I also have suggestions of, um, people always ask if I'm gonna put apples in it or pears, um, strawberries, any kind of juicy, <laughs> juicy fruit, not the gum, um, any kind of juicy fruit. Oh crap, I don't have a Discord command. Oh crap, uh, crap. Um. Oh, gentle suggest. Okay. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me get the link for my Discord. I'm so not ready for anything. Look at me. Mm, how do I? There we go. Can I copy that? There we go.
there there is a link to my discord um uh if i recognize your handle from twitch um i will assign you a nice role of guest um although right now everything honestly every channel is open pretty much except for not safe for work um i haven't gotten down to roles yet so if you go into my discord and act a fool you will find yourself ejected you wonder how an autumn sangria would work that's interesting um because you know for me the autumn version of sangria is mulled wine so i would say either wine or juice but um like i think the autumn version of sangria for me is mulled cider and that is just apple juice and the spices and um right apple juice the spices or apple cider and then i don't add any actual alcohol to the cooking part of it i add alcohol afterwards if you want to so i think yeah i was like what's your yeah what's like an autumn sangria and i'd be like spice cider um so yeah essentially this is done i will taste it however for best results for absolute best results you're gonna want to wait and this is the part that sucks you're going to want to wait about two to eight hours to drink this um and then things will have really had time oh all right well i will um you're in i mean i'll basically just hit you up from another discord that i know you're in so yeah. um they really do need time to sit and impart um impart the flavors of the citrus into the wine um however i do have a but okay also be careful when you're tapping um when you're tapping your spoon on the sangria because it is red wine and will get all over the place oh fair enough um so let's see ah right taste test we'll do a jam jar because i'm classy um that back in there and this is for in a minute when i talk about when i talk about what you do when you don't want to wait two to eight hours for your sangria to be ready oh no yikes well on the bright side, your electric bill is paid. Yikes. So that that's just like you just kick it, you just kick yourself. Alright. So yeah, we're gonna have a taste test. Ladle. Well, I mean, the wine is definitely like it, it definitely looks like you added orange juice to wine because you have um, the other items are in there. It smells really good. Um, you get all that citrus coming at you. You get the not the overpowering um, of the spirits, but like not the over like like now I'm doing magic, the overpowering of the spirits, but they're in there. Oh, uh, feed. Yeah, you might want to also strain it after. Wow. So that's yummy. That's good. Yep, that's a winner. That is a winner. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Ooh. So. Uh, we're making this when you're in town. We can make it when you're in town. Um, so essentially, you know what you do with this? Oh, actually, it's got a nicer shot. There we go. Um, is you let it chill. You also make sure that you adjusted the shelves in your fridge so that it can actually put a bucket under them. 
I did. Yay. Now, that's going to go away. Also in there are the, um, oh, ha <laughs> ha. If anybody remembers the cookie baking, um, the cookie baking episode, episode, like I'm a TV show. Uh, these are the, the, the dough balls that I froze and I put them in the fridge to thaw out and they should be ready to bake possibly later this weekend. Um, trust me, if I, if, I mean, I'll be honest, this is not bad, but I am going to take a picture of this setup. Um, join cooking YouTube. <laughs> um, aw, thank you. I, I, I am super humbled by the fact that one, this is fun for me and people like watching it. And I'm also really just happy that I've met some, some real fun people via Twitch. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, right, 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 right. So, um, what do you do when you don't want to wait two to eight hours for sangria? Well, there's also solutions for that. We cheat. We do lots and lots of cheating. So, this is just straight up OJ, uh, no pulp, store, store brand, no pulp orange juice. This is a sweet red wine. You can also get a sweet red blend. Um, again, it is just as cheap as anything else. Um, they actually tell you this one is just like, they have a dry to sweet. I don't know if you can see it. Um, oh, you can. So the kangaroo, the little, the little line with the kangaroo, dry is over here, sweet is over here, and this is like three quarters of the way to sweet, so it's not like sugary red wine. Oh, no. I thought about doing a here's one I made earlier, but I don't have that kind of time. Um, and then this is just any Prosecco that you have lying around. And um, we're also going to make use of all of our liquors. Like pretty much everything we everything we brought to bear, we're going to use right now, um, and essentially is really on you to decide in what proportion. I can't open things, so ah, there we go. Another reason not to get old or get a chronic illness is sometimes the muscle wasting in your hands means it's hard to open things. Um, so, I'm just going to take a wild stab at this. Um, I do occasionally have proportions for... Oh, wait. Wait. Where's my... I might actually have this written down. Dang it. I had something for this. Um, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm ruining it all. I'm ruining the stream now. I'm so not ready. Um, this is my little notebook that I put in random cocktail type uh, things in. Um, and I ended up after a while making a ratio type, making ratio type recipes for drinks. Um, so if you have something, you can replace, you can swap things out with this or that. Um, and did I write it down in here? I did not. Nope. Did I write it down on my other, my other cheating notepad? I have like notepads all over the house. So, you know, I'm a nerd. Um, yes, here it is. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, so my, uh, my cheat is, uh, Three ounces of red wine, one ounce of citrus vodka, a half ounce of triple sec, a half ounce of elderflower liqueur, an ounce of simple syrup, which I'm not going to do because the, the peach is pretty sweet, um, and a quarter ounce of things. So that's what you can do if you're really not in the mood to wait for your sangria. Right, it's totally cheat sheet. Um, spring vice grips. Well, yeah. 
Oh, you were at lunch, though. That's fine. We're having a food stream, and you were at lunch. So it's going to be... Um, oh, whoops, hold on. I can move this out into the open so you can actually watch. Don't mind all the clinks and clanks. Here we go. Uh, three ounces of red wine. We're not going to make a big drink because... We're not. It's my stream, I said so. Um, an ounce of citrus vodka. I don't have citrus vodka, but I have peach vodka. So we're gonna go with that. Also, it's easier to do sometimes liquor by weight if you don't, if you can't like, you know, cause I always end up spilling sometimes when I use shot glasses. Uh, let's see, a half an ounce of triple sec. We were making sangria. I'm so sorry you missed a bunch of it, but I'll bring it back out for another shot in a minute. Um, and this one, I will, I will type the recipe out into Discord because I, I haven't really thought this one through very much. Um, I'm not going to use an ounce of simple syrup, but I am going to go with a half ounce of elderflower. Did I already use that? No, I didn't. What's funny is I realized that my recipe doesn't actually have any orange juice in it, which is weird. So I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna now I'm changing up my recipe on the fly. Um, and then what else? Well, we'll add some of the strawberry in, but not much, just like a quarter ounce of that. And let's see, let's go ahead and stir that with some ice. Actually, let's not use ice. Let's use frozen fruit. Just like a few, just enough to like Also splash all over the kitchen. Um, just enough to float to, not, to act like ice cubes. Um, and when they melt, what's the worst you have? You have fruit in your um, in your drink. Oh no. Alright, so just a stir to chill everything. Right, fruit in your already fruity drink. It's the worst thing ever. Um, okay. That is good, but it's actually a little sweet. But I got something for that. All right, so. Sorry. I'm missing the whole, so. That, and that's where the Prosecco comes in. Um, we can measure it or not. I sometimes put an equal amount or just shy of that I put the red wine in, so I'll go like two ounces of Prosecco. Okay, maybe three, because I keep pouring, so, you know. Maybe three and a half, because I couldn't stop pouring. The point of this, <laughs> the point of all this is, um, you kind of just make it up on the fly. You're making it up with the general. You're making it up with the same ingredients that sangria would have. So, um, this is essentially like you don't want to sit and make a sangria that sits overnight, but you've got sweet red wine around, you've got orange juice, you've got liqueurs, you've got prosecco, and you can make a really easy instant sangria um, that way, and you don't have to wait two to eight hours for it.
and it is delicious. So for anybody who missed, um, who missed the sangria being made, this is my bucket. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Um, how dry? My regular sangria, um, it is, it is actually, um, it's fairly, no, it's not sweet, but I cut, I think I cut the dryness of the red wine, so it comes out as fairly neutral. Um, I would say if you want to maintain that dryness, just use less sugar, less orange juice, and then you'll probably still be good. Um, sometimes if you want to make it crisp, um, you can add like you can add actual lemon juice. <laughs> that looks like a glass full of delicious headache. I know red wines. Ah, oh. Higgs, hello. Um, so this is my this is what is going to go into the fridge for about two to eight hours, um, and uh, probably like later this evening if it's still nice outside, we might grab some plastic cups and take it onto the roof. Um, but this is. And, you know, again, you can see my recipe, but that's just a template. I would suggest if you already know you don't like things too sweet, cut back on the sweet ingredients. If you want them sweeter, put them in. If you want more lemons, then if you want to put more lemons and limes in than you do oranges and grapefruits, do that. This is just a total on the fly like, hey, I just feel like making sangria. So over the next over the next weekend, I can have sangria, um, but there is no real set fast rule. You can find a million different sangria recipes on the internet. Uh, mine is never going to be the definitive one, but it works for me. Um, <laughs> if you want sweetness, watch Brian stream. Oh my gosh, shut up. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so I'm going to drink my glass of delicious red headache. For some, um, and um, that's it. Um, as I said earlier, oh, whoops, I forgot my. Well, I'm gonna throw my test batch into there. Um, if you want to make this without alcohol, go right ahead. Um, get a nice, get a nice grape juice. Is there a time limit? Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, Go to, I know it seems silly, but um, go get a 100% juice from the store, like Juicy Juice, which you think is for kids, but it is at least 100% juice. It's not always 100% of the juice that it's the flavor of, um, but go ahead and get that um, juice or sparkling grape juice or sparkling apple cider, sparkling apple juice, and then do the same thing. Add fruit to it add um, whatever other natural flavors. So you don't want to add spirits or liquor. You want to squeeze other juices in there. You want to add frozen fruit in there. Um, and then it's totally non-alcoholic. It still has that same like slightly turned up, you know, it's not just drinking fruit juice. It's turned up a little bit. Um, so how long does it last? Um, there is no time limit on sangria. Once you take the citrus out, um, I have taken it. I have actually saved bottles or I've saved like, you know, I have my cute little Pinterest bottle with the, um, with like the, you know, the chalk label that I can change. Um, I put it in this, I've kept it in the fridge. Um, I package it up and take it to a party. Um, it lasts a while. The only, the only real thing I say is once again, um, you're going to want to take the fruit out the next day because, uh, and you can save the fruit and actually crush the fruit and get, get all that goodness back, but the pith and the peels are gonna turn it bitter. So without the fruit in it, the sangria is gonna be good for a while, if it lasts that long. You can pasteurize your own juice, ooh. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, but I don't even I don't even make like yogurt. So if there's a whole lot of things to do with heat, the most I do is like a sous vide. Um, but yeah, most people probably won't have leftover sangria. Um, ah, yes. Um, oh, I also 
that's something I can do on a future stream is I make limoncello and I make orangecello. Oh, my echo in the other room is telling me that it's giving me a notification and I'm like, oh, okay, just keep playing music, please. Um, to fruit safe, fruit safe temperature. What, what temperature is safe for fruit? I don't know, throw fruit at me and just find out. Um, so yeah, I do make limoncello and that is in the uh, sous vide cooker. And for that, I just chop up, um, I, I zest or I very thinly peel lemons, add sugar, add vodka, and then heat it up. Um, heat it up to just boiling for a few hours and I let it sit. And when I'm done, I got limoncello. It is super simple if you have a sous vide cooker. Otherwise, to do it the slow way is to just put all those things together and put it in a dark place and then swirl it every, every few days. Same thing. It's just making infused, inf infused booze. Um, yes, the, uh, the main reason why you can't just make, um, something like limoncello, like by boiling it is that you really need, <laughs> you really need to be able to stop the alcohol from evaporating. So that's why you use a sous vide cooker or you use bell jars. So it's like, you're screwing the lid on, you're keeping that from evaporating. Um, I would like to think I'm a catch. Um, there is somebody who would probably agree with you who, cause, because he knows he's going to get to drink sangria later and maybe eat cookies. But um, I do joke that like this is husband material stuff, but I also loved it more when I considered it singles material stuff. Like I just want to, I just want to make sangria today. I just want to make cookies today. I just want to learn how to roast a bird. I want to do that. Not to impress somebody else, just because. I get hungry, I get thirsty, let's make some fun stuff. And let's figure out how to make it really, really easily so that you can still go to work for eight hours and not come home and be exhausted. I hate those freaking 30 minute meal shows where they're like, yeah, it just takes no time at all. And I'm like, yeah, because you had an entire staff helping you do all this crap. <sighs> um, I'd like to think that I'm a friend catch. I, I do love having friends everywhere and all over. Um, so let me see. Actually, um, hold on a moment. I think I can do this right. Sorry, I gotta fix this. Sorry about that. Okay, that's slightly better, I think. <laughs> but yeah, only 30 minutes to cook because someone, not even you, somebody else did all the preparation for you earlier. Yeah, it takes 30 minutes from start to finish. 30 minutes from start to finish, but that's assuming a lot of it's already done or, you know, and yeah, you're using pasta that's quick cooking, quick cooking pasta or frozen this, but yeah, I have never, it's never, I mean, the one thing it takes me 30, less than 30 minutes to make is, I'm back to my shortcuts now, hold on. Um, I can, pasta in the microwave. Can you actually see that? You probably can't. Um, I have different times for different types of pastas that I can make one serving of in the microwave. Um, you can make it without the Saint Germain. You can make it without the vodka. You can make it without the triple sec. Okay, don't make it without the triple sec. You can make it without anything you want. You can leave it out. You don't like it, leave it out. If something tastes, because I know Saint Germain, certain, certain types of booze or fruit or food taste completely distasteful to people. So leave it out. It's not gonna, no, leave it out. Oh, 
You have everything. Well, then you know what? I expect to see some. I expect to see some sangria photos later than Higgs. Um, but no, you don't need it at all. Oh, you made fresh. Oh, fresh tomato sauce. Love that. Fried rice. I, I don't know how to make fried rice. Um, I should probably sit down and try and learn it sometime. Um, the one thing that I probably won't end up doing on stream is actual live cooking on my stove, which is over there, because that to me is way too much. That's a lot of attention and a lot of things happening, and I don't want Twitch to be witness to me getting caught on fire because I was distracted. Um, but I do do a lot of things in the oven. Um, I, a lot of things in the broiler, a lot of things I roast, I slow cook that way. Um, I actually have some drumsticks, some chicken drumsticks that I'm going to probably roast um, or broil this weekend um, and make them like nice and crispy. And essentially it's going to go well with sangria, like cookout, cookout food, even though I'm not cooking out. So yeah. Um, day old rice, frozen veggies, ham, bacon, eggs, and the sauces. All right, I'll, I'll give it a shot sometime. Um, but we are up on, we're like an hour and a half, um, actual cooking before I'm browning stuff and mixing it. It is a lot. It is a lot. Um, but, um, yeah, I tend to not, the stuff that I make on the stove, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. But I need all my focus for that. So yeah, I got it. Again, fruit pulp. You probably want to strain this. Uh, you probably want to strain this, but otherwise, you know. Um, so let's see. Happy Kaiju Stompy time. Oh my gosh, that is the best handle. That's amazing. If you were here and I didn't say hi before, I'm really sorry. I was trying not to cut myself. <laughs> um... No, I'm just now I'm like, Arr! I'm just thinking like, Arr! it's silly, probably because I'm drinking sangria. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to probably bring it to a close. There's nothing wrong with being lurky. Um, if you're enjoying what you're watching, then that's fine. Um, I, you know. I have no issues with lurkers. I don't think anybody does. Um, so let me see who is online and streaming. Oh, Josh is playing. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. You know, you y'all are just. Oops. No, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Um, the fact that you're okay with me trying different things is, yeah, my, my faucet does sound like an angry cat. That's true. The water pressure is very weird here. Um, yes. Um, hold on a second. If I can remember, ooh, Mr. J zero TD. Um, I appreciate that you enjoy this and it is fun for me to share a little bit of this with you. Um, Is that right? That's right. Um, I, I I love that, you know, you think this is fun and you think it's cool. And um, I don't know, this summer I'll probably be making more stuff. If not, I'll be playing more games as one does. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, oh my God, there's 28 people here. That is so cool. We're gonna raid Josh with 28 people. It's gonna be awesome. Um, so I hope everyone does as, as Diana said, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you all on Discord on my own stream next Tuesday, if not before then. I have a long weekend, so I might be around. Who knows? Um, but let's uh, let's go. Um, y'all are making me blush now, so I'm going to go ahead and click that raid. Go over to Josh. See you over there shortly. I'm going to clean up here and stop my stream. So thanks, everybody, and I will see you in Josh's stream in a moment. Bye. Start the raid. There we go.